Sup with it. My bad. My bad for keeping everybody on pause. I should have done an update long before this. Got busy, man. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about it. A lot to talk about. Oh, what the hell happened? You gotta be kidding me, bro. That's a dirt bag. My laptop just put a dirt bag move, man. Hey, I'll be right with you. We can't accept that. Can't accept it. Okay. There. Yeah. Yep. One, two, three, let's go. We're here. We are here. I'm gonna talk for all my people that aren't real, man. Hey, I'm gonna try hard. I'm gonna try hard to keep this video to have this video be monetized at the end. I heard the way I keep drinking rock stars. They might not want to monetize that. Um, cussing. Um, cussing. Smoking. So I'm gonna try to. I mean, if you go to my community studio. YouTube studio, you see all my lives, and they just all have yellow dollar signs. Like, nobody, I just, it's just bleh, crazy to me. So, bro, eh, who cares about all that? But I need to say, I apologize. I apologize to you guys for not doing the update much sooner, especially considering a few people donated me to have gas to make the Rio Nevada. And a few people talked all kinds of smack. Made forty five dollars an hour. You need it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah, I did. I mean, just because I had like a high hourly rate, because I mean, I didn't get my check and just blow it all on the rental and just all kinds of bills into where I didn't have gas money. Yeah, it's what it is. Now a lot of you guys may be happy to know I'm not even making forty five dollars an hour no more. Back in, to making twenty five. But look at let's go to my injuries. Look at this. This really isn't that bad. Look at my eye though. Look at that. Behind my ear is bruised. Look at my finger. It's not even facing the right way anymore. And I'm a guitar player, bro. I could I tried playing guitar. I couldn't do it. Look at my thumb. You notice the difference in these two thumbs? Hell is swollen, dog. This one here is hell is swollen. What happened? Split what happened, dude? I'm not there yet. First time I say I do apologize. Uh, when I went up to Reno last, I went to my trailer, I start working, and I just got on that eat, no, work, eat, sleep program, where I would work, eat, and sleep, and I kept telling myself, go live tomorrow. Oh, good looking out in the donation, man. Thank you, Mr. Diggs, we give you a burpee, brother, even though I'm working with like three broken fingers. And, ah. Uh, and my ribs hurt, too. Every time I've been in a fight, dude, my ribs always hurt the next day. And I don't even think I got cracked in my ribs. So what happened? Who did I fight? One went down. Hey, <laughs> I'm not there yet. I got some notes. I wanted to add, like, a really... Dude, I'm going to throw, like, a little stupid little tidbit in. And you guys are all, screw the tidbit. I'm about the fight. But I do want to say something funny, bro, because when I was in school, like in high school... Remember that brand Gordon Smith? I had a Gordon Smith shirt. It was gray and blue, and it said Gordon Smith all over it. 
and I wore it to school, and some kids like, you wore that shirt last year. You wore that shirt last year to school. Now I'm thinking, damn, you can't wear a shirt two years in a row. I mean, it still fits. And it's like, he, he, he tried to humiliate me, clown me for saying I wore a shirt two years in a row. And then like not too much later, I got a Metallica and Justice for All t-shirt. Brand new from the store. And I wore it to school. And this kid said, why do you have a brand new Metallica shirt on? You should never wear a brand new like Metallica and band shirt. Those things should be old and like worn in. So I'm just like, but this kid's like, hey, why do you got an old worn in shirt? And this kid's like, hey, why do you got a brand new shirt? Dude, that's how YouTube, my YouTube comment section has turned into. I don't know what happened. I don't know where all these goobers come from. And don't get me wrong. I'm not calling the point of view cougar, goober by any stretch of imagination. I love the point of view crew. Point of view crew is part of me, homeboy. But I'm saying amongst us, amongst the wheat, homeboy, is tares. Thorns have come in. Enemy came in and planted thorns among us, dude, in the form of trolls, dog. And they come in and they just say, that shirt's old. That shirt's new. No matter what I do or say, dude, when I posted a picture of my eye, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to fight. They didn't know the details. They didn't know if I got jumped, carjacked, mugged. They didn't know if I was defending myself. They didn't know anything, but they just start, dude, be accountable. It's their favorite thing to say. You're too old to be fighting, man. Get it together. Get it together. You're just hammering me, bro, without even knowing any details, dog. That shirt's old. That shirt's new. That shirt's too old to wear. That shirt's too new to wear. Can't win, homie. But I had the point of view crew, and that's all I give a fizz up about. The rest is tears, stores among the wheat. Anyways, dude. Got in a fight, bro. Got in a fight. And I'm not happy or proud of it. I think it's a shame. And would you believe the dude who I got in a fight was that drunk from work? That hardcore alcoholic who I've been struggling with at work since day one? And you guys know me if you know the point of view, crew. I can't stand drunks, dude. I don't want, I don't drink. I don't want to be around a drunk. Some drunk fool just talking out the side of his neck about how cool he is and how awesome he is and how he's the best. I don't want to hear some big-headed, egotistical, arrogant drunk who's on a blackout drunk, bro, just stays up for days on end, d drinks coffee and whiskey in the morning, a couple cans of beer at lunch, more whiskey, more beer throughout the day. Throughout the day, first thing in the morning, crack beer. I don't want that around me, dude. I don't want that kind of drunkenness around me because it's reckless. Dude, it's a liability to everyone involved. This dude gets blackout drunk where he can't even remember what happened the day previous. And not only that, he just has the biggest, he's so arrogant. He just thinks he's the best at everything. He's God's gift to electricity. He's the best worker. He's the best man. He's the best this. He's just the best. He just has no fault. He's just all this and a big bucket of boats. Wrong. You're an alcoholic. You're a hardcore alcoholic going to rehab, bro. It's disgusting to drink to that level, bro. And you guys know that my best friend, I have a best friend who struggles with alcoholism. And I pray for him every day. He's not happy about where he's at, dog, and I, and I feel for him. I have my own struggles, dude. I, I'm on a methadone. I'm not happy about it, but methadone doesn't cause me to black out and talk out the side of my neck and be careless and reckless and pe people's lives in danger. So here's how it started out. Here's what started the whole thing. This fool lost his wallet. That's what started it. He lost his wallet. And that's another point I want to make about how arrogant and egotistical this dude, he's probably watching, he'll watch at some point, how arrogant and egotistical this dude is. He's the best at everything. He, he's just the bomb, but, but yet here, but you can't keep track of your own wallet. Look at the contradiction. You're the best, homeboy. You're all that in a big bucket of boats, and yet you don't even know where your wallet's at. Why can you not find your wallet? Because you got blackout drunk, and you wake up in the morning, and everything's brand new to you. And you don't know what happened yesterday. You don't know what happened the day before. It's just, wallet's gone because I'm drunk, blackout drunk. And that's what happens to blackout drunks. They lose their wallet, homie. I mean, I might lose my keys or my glass or something for like a few minutes. I'm going to find it, dog. I'm just not going to lose it permanently. Just space it. So he lost his wallet. Then him and I 
had a new job to go to in South Lake Tahoe. So we were going to take our trailer and put it at Carson City. We already made calls, already had it worked out. We were supposed to pay $900 for this trailer, $450 a piece. And was I happy at the thought of happening? Now I'm going to have to live with this freaking alcoholic? No. I'm thinking, dog, damn. Not only am I going to have to live with this alcoholic again in the trailer, I've been in the trailer by myself. Now I'm going to have to live with this dude again who's constantly drunk and I can't stand it. Not only that, I have to drive with him an hour to work up the hill to Lake Tahoe unless I take my car and he takes his. It's just, I'm just going to have them. It's just hard enough being around him at work. Now I got to live with them and drive with them. And we've already had our fallouts, dude, because it says I can't stand being around a drunk, bro. Sorry. Dude, I don't, especially at work. You want to be around some guy at work who's drunk? So he lost his wallet, and now he needs money. How's he going to have money? And he lost his bank card. So he has his people sell me some money to my card so I could pull it out on an ATM and give it to him so he could pay it. And then that was a big cluster fizz up too because now that his money's on my card, now it's just all about how I can get it off. It's his way of the highway. Here's how we're going to get it off. We're going to do this or that. I mean, you have our trailer, bro, and you have ATMs like about 15, 20 minutes away. Or you drive like an hour to Nixon. He's like, after work, we're going to Nixon, this and that. Dude, I don't want to drive with you for an hour. I don't even, I wish your money wasn't even in my account, dude. I wish I didn't even have to go with you to an ATM. I don't want to do business with you. I don't want to be around you because you're drunk all the time. And it's hard to deal with the freaking drunk. Some egotistical, arrogant drunk, bro. No, thank you. So now his money's on my card and we got to get it out. And I was just going to go at lunchtime on my own to this bar in Gerlach. 20 miles, 20 minutes from our job site and pull the 500 out and give it to him. But then I open my mouth and I'm like, hey, bro, I'm dipping at lunch to go ahead and get that money. He's like, I'll go with you. So him, I, and another coworker go to this bar to use the ATM because they have a $500 limit. The store has $200. So just go there. So we go to the bar. This fool starts pounding shots on our lunch break. Shots of whiskey when we're at work. And not only that, when we left the job site, I said, I got to go to the trailer to pick up my phone. And he goes, yeah, take me my pad real quick, too. I take him to his pad. He comes out with a bottle of whiskey. It's only like this much left in it. I drank all this by myself last night. As if, as if that's something to brag about. And it's like this much left. And he starts pounding whiskey on our lunch break. But, I mean, who cares? He's already been drinking whiskey all day long in his coffee anyway. He's already had a couple beers. He's already three sheets to the wind. What's a few more beers? And he thinks he's just God's gift to this company, bro. You don't care about the company. If you cared about the company, you wouldn't go to work drunk. That's disrespectful to the company. That's disrespectful to everybody involved. It's a liability. It's dangerous. Nobody wants a drunk around them. Nobody wants some dude drunk around them. Arrogant and egotistical and just talking outside of a neck about how awesome he is and how cool he is. You know what is another thing, dude? Listen to this dude. We wear a hard hat to work. We have to wear a hard hat to work. He doesn't. I don't, I'm the only dude who walks around without a hard hat. I don't have to wear a hard hat. What kind of dude is that? That goes to work. This company gave you a job. They're paying you great money to come work for them. And you're just breaking one of the most basic rules is because you can. Check me out. I don't have, I'm the only dude who can walk around without a hard hat. That's the type of guy he is, bro. That he would just not wear a hard hat at work because so he could be the only dude that doesn't have one because check me out, I'm the only dude that doesn't have to wear a hard hat. As if that means something because he's hammered, he's three sheets of the wind, he's been drinking whiskey all day, and now he doesn't have his hard hat on because he doesn't have to. Because he's the best worker ever and he's smarter than everybody. Get the, save it, dude. That's lame. So, hey, we gotta go to the bar we got to go to the atm i go and i use it we get there he starts taking shots after he was already drinking on this bottle of whiskey and this fool gets faded bro and then another thing you know what he did he orders a cheeseburger and fry for me when he knows i don't eat lunch i'm not gonna eat a cheeseburger and fry at lunch it's too much food i'm gonna eat like a fruit cocktail some beef jerky he knows i have stomach issues i'm not gonna eat that he ordered me, him, another dude, a cheeseburger and fry and all this. You know why he did that? So we could eat? No, so he can get faded at the bar. 
Because he knew it would take a while to cook the food. So while the food's cooking, line me up a shot. Hey, why are we still here, bro? We need to leave. No, I ordered food. They're making our food. Uh, nobody wants food. He didn't ask me if I want anything. He just ordered it. So now we're waiting on these cheeseburger fries that no one wants, and he's taking shots after he already drank whiskey, and he gets in my car and passes out. And I turn a corner, and he falls over, and it's a rental, and he spills a full tea in my seat, bro. And if you go in my car right now, it reeks like beer. Why does my rental car reek like beer, bro? I don't drink beer. Did he get back there and spill a beer? Disrespectful as hell? Probably. So I turn a corner. He's so hammered. He falls over, bro. And he busts his big T. So I stop. I, I take the ice out. I take the cup out. I'm like, dude, what the hell, man? Come on, dude. Another coworker up front's like, damn. And then he just passes out. Passes out, dude. Now he's blackout drunk on whiskey. Asleep in my back seat. And we're heading back to the job site. Where are you at? Is that a position you want to be in? Does that sound like a great employee? Does it sound like someone you want to be around? I don't want to be around some drunk dude, some dude drunk on whiskey. The hell, bro? You know how those people act? Arrogant. Egotistical. They talk out of the side of their neck. I know I keep saying the same words. You know why? Because I can't cuss. So I really, without my cuss words, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Other than just dumb. Who wants to? I don't want to be around that, bro. And I should have a choice in the matter. See, after work, I don't go to bars and I don't go hang around people drinks. I don't want to be around it. So why should I have to go to work and have a drunk forced on me? Huh? I'm just trying to go earn my hourly wage. I'm just trying to go give this company a good day's work. I'm trying to earn money to support, you know, myself, my family, pay my bills. And I got this drunk pushed off on me. Blackout drunk, drinking whiskey in his coffee hammered three sheets of the wind not wearing a hard hat and just talking about how he's the best at everything he's the best he's the greatest god's gift to electricity um no one could do it like he can do it he's better everyone's just in his way he's just the best bro he's just the best he's the shit to hear him that, that's his exact words i'm the shit one time he called me on a sunday i was at church and he was blowing me up and i was sending him the voicemail finally i answered it like what and he goes hey dude i'm the shit he goes, you're not the shit. Maybe one day you will be, but I am. And the next day, Monday at work, I said, dude, why'd you call me? And, and I was in front of the form and I said, say you're the shit. He, he's like, what? He had no idea. I did. I called you yesterday. And he had to call whoever he's with. Did I, you know, because he's blackout. Dude. He doesn't even remember calling me, telling me how great he is. You want to be around some dude drunk on whiskey, blackout, telling you about how great he is? And cussing and saying GD every other word and Jesus and just being real condescending and just so anyway, he passed out in the back of my car. We go back to the job site. We get out of the car and he immediately starts verbally abusing me and my other coworker Joe. Calling us F A G G O T S over and over again. F-A-G-G-O-T-S's. He's calling us. Get it together. Why don't you guys have it together? Then he said, you know, the reason I bought lunch is because I knew I was going to come here and not be together because I'm drunk. But I bought you guys lunch. You're supposed to have it together. How come you guys don't have it together? And, and dude, all I did was drive and drop them off at their cars. We have work to do on the other side of the solar panel place, a road crossing. I merely just dropped them off at their cars. And then we're, they get in their cars, we're going to drive over toward the work set. And he's just walking around like, you guys don't know what you're doing. You know how annoying it is to have some drunk who has no idea where he's at or what the hell's going on tell you you don't know what's going on? What? Some drunk, blackout drunk, just had God knows how many shots of whiskey, just killed off a a third of a bottle of whiskey. He fell asleep in my car. Now he's all sweating, like yellow looking, looking all like crazy. And he's like, you guys don't know what you're doing. Get it together. Just verbally abusing us. And I couldn't hear where the fight comes. And I couldn't take it no more. So I was like, dude, shut up, bro. I'm not just, get out of my head. I just can't take your, your mouth. You're, you're calling me an F-A-G-G-O-T-S. 
You guys got to get together. How can you not get together? You guys are just uh, verbally abusing us, dude. And he doesn't even realize what he's doing because he's so hammered on whiskey. He's talking outside his neck. So I was like, dude, shut up, man. And he came over to me, and I didn't expect it, and he starts swinging, bro. Came over and starts swinging on me. at work right there. So what do you think I'm going to do, man? I start, I swung back to defend myself. I threw a couple punches. It's kind of like he punched me in the face and I cut punch him in the face. He punched me in the face and I punched him in his face. We like threw a couple punches. Then I stopped, dude. I stopped. Because I realized I'm a, I'm a work. I didn't want to go any further. I didn't want to fight him in the first place. I just want him to quit talking like a drunk idiot. Just shut up, bro. Didn't mean I wanted to chuck him at work. And when he came over and started chucking him, swinging on me, I either got to run or fall down and curl into a ball, or just, what are you doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? It was like, what the hell? What are you doing, man? And then I stopped. Because after all, we are co-workers, friends-ish. Usually if you get in an argument with someone, I've fought with friends before, and it flares up like that, and you throw a couple punches, that's what it is. A couple punches, and it's over. I didn't think we had a fight to the death. I wasn't trying to fight him to the death. I wasn't trying to do, break his jaw. I wasn't trying to do nothing. He, he came swinging at me, bro. So I defended myself and then stopped. And I thought he would stop. But you know what that POS did? You know what that motherfucker did, dog? And I've never seen this done. And I've been in a lot of fights, dude. And I've seen a lot of fights. And I've never seen this done. And it's chicken shit. And it's weak. I mean, when you talk about fair fighting and be a gentleman, you don't walk up and cheap shot somebody. You don't walk up and throw dirt in someone's eyes. You somewhat of a fair fight, bro. Oh, you want to get them up? Let's go from the shoulders, bro. And, and you don't you, you don't jump people. You don't kick them when they're down. You know, and I never seen this, dude. You know what he did? He pulled my shirt over my head. And it happened that quick. What a piece of garbage, bro. Like he's done it before. Now I know why people take their shirts off and they fight. I used to think they did it just to look tough and the flats and throw their shirt down, maybe show off some tattoos. But no, they do because they don't want their shirt pulled over their head. Bro, this dude pulled my shirt over my head, dog. After we just threw a couple punches and I stopped. I thought we were going to shake and be like, all right, man, yeah, keep out. What the hell? And I stopped because why did I stop? Because I didn't think we were going to the death, dog. We threw a couple punches. There was like a break in the momentum. It looked like a good place to stop. He's out of line in the first place, bro. I don't want it to get any worse. Let's, let's de-escalate, I'm thinking. And I stopped, bro. And just that quick, my, my shirt was over my head. And when my shirt was over my head, that fool hit me like five times in the side of my head right here as hard as he could. And when you have your shirt pulled over your head and you're getting punched, you don't know the punch is coming. If you and I are fighting like this and you punch, even if you hit my face, I'm probably going to go like that a little bit. I'm probably going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lock up. I might move a little bit. I might even deflect. I, I'm going to see it coming. Even if I take the full wrath, I'll at least go, but when your shirt's over your head, it's just like your head sitting there and it's boom, boom. Bro, chicken shit, dog. Weak. I would have never done that to him, bro. Weak. When I wasn't expecting it either, pull my shirt over my head. So he hit me like five times in my head. And then I dropped to a knee. Finally drops me to a knee, bro. Boom, I fell to a knee. Because I was feeling those punches. They were coming quick. Boom, boom, boom. And what are you doing? Dude, just bam, bam. What are you supposed to do? I'm feeling them. I'm going like this. I can't see, and he's got my shirt, and it's a big old baggy Carhartt, and I'm just like, but when it dropped me to my knee, that was the best thing that could have happened, because after that, I, it gave me a burst. When he dropped, when I dropped to my knee, I, 
I burst it back up. I used my legs to spring upward and it gave me like a bounce. So I'm down like this and then I, boom, I was up. And then I had my push up against my car. And then I stood back and with everything I had, boom, kicked the hell out of him with my steel toe boot and his balls. And he kind of flinched, but he laughed. And he's bleeding out. He didn't feel nothing, dude. He's drunk on whiskey. He's like, hug me, brother. Hug me. I love you, dog. Sally's fight, bro. Yeah, Sally's fight, but Sally's don't pull his shirt over their head. And beat me five, six. I feel like if he would have knocked me out, he would have kicked me in the face while I was down, bro. Dude, I never seen no one fight and pull a shirt over someone's head, dog. I never seen it. I heard about it. I guess it could happen. I've never done it. I've never practiced that move. I just want to go from the shoulder. What's up, dog? Let's fight. Pull my shirt on my head, dog. I don't know about you. I can't see the comments, but I think that's weak. I'm pointing at myself and I say weak. No, I think that's weak. Strong, weak. And I'd be disappointed, say, if I was with my brother and we went out somewhere and he got in a fight and I seen him pull the shirt over, I would break it up and I'd say, Dustin, dude, what's up, Ricochet? Nah, dog. I would stop one of my homeboys from doing that. And if I heard about it later, if later my brother was like, hey, I got in a fight last night with this guy at the gas station, and I pulled their shirt overhead, dude, and I was just like, I, would, I wouldn't give him props. I'd be disgusting. I'd feel like that was a cheap shot. I'd, I'd just feel like a tweak, dog. That's just me. A lot of people say, hey, there's no fair fighting, but are you going to bite someone? Maybe, huh? No, I wouldn't bite, dog. I wouldn't bite. I'm not going to pull your head over your head. I'm not going to kick you while you're down. I'm not going to jump you. I'm going to give you a head up fade, dog. I'm not going to pull a weapon on you. I'm not going to throw dirt in your eyes. I'm not going to like act like I don't want to fight. And then, I mean, dude, I'm just going to fight you, dog. Straight up. She pulled it on my head, bro. Boom, boom, boom. I fell down, rushed up, put me in my car, gave him a kick, and then got my car. And, and he's a drunk, drunk person. He's like, I love you, dog. Hug me, brother. To, I'm going to love you. To trying to refight. I love you, dog. This is my uh, whiskey drunk. I got my car. I'm out of here. This is bleeding pretty bad. It's not that bad at all, but it was, it was bleeding pretty bad. This was totally swollen, bro. This is where I got hit at five times. He didn't hit me in my eye. He hit me up here, like in my temple. And it just all came down here, bro. This is all because my shirt was over my head. Pull my shirt on my head. Another coworker right there witnessed the whole thing. So I got my car and he like was reaching in like for my keys and my steering wheel. I think like he was going to do something, stop me from leaving or just acting weird, bro. And I grabbed his finger and bit that motherfucker all the way back. Damn, I cussed, man. Look at my monetization. Gee. And he laughed. He laughed, bro. You're not feeling nothing, man. I didn't realize that. About, and, and there's the difference between drunk on beer and drunk on whiskey, bro. There's a straight up difference, man. I don't care who you are. Yeah, maybe. Get this guy. Hang on. Where's my moderators at? I don't want to know. Um, I still got the job. So, okay, so look, here's what happened next, man. Here's what happened next. It's crazy because you're looking at someone and you're talking to someone who, I'm not going to say institutionalized, but I did a grip of time. And your brain kind of gets molded to in those rules and regulations. It's kind of like things feel right or they feel wrong. If you don't want to do something, have it feel wrong. To the point where if my car got stolen... I think I'd have a hard time reporting it stolen, calling the cops. I just don't I just don't think I'd be able to do it, bro. I might chop it up as a loss, man, because I think I'd have a hard time calling the cops, making a report. But let me tell you this before I tell you about the job. So after the fight, I left. I'm like, I'm going, I'm going back to California, dog. I'm not gonna be around this junk fool no more. There's other things going on with it. Oh shit, gotta hide the rock star. It was done with anyway. Yesterday, the next day, Friday, we may or may not work. But there's no sweeping it on the table. 
There's no acting like it didn't happen. Because for one, another coworker saw it. And two, look at my eye. And look at my finger. And look at my thumb. And the idea is, ha, I just show up at work the next day. And I know he's got to bust them. Dudes, it's going to come out in the wash, bro. There's no sweeping on the rug and acting like it didn't happen. So, I left. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to California. On the way, leaving, let me back up. A week ago, I went from my trailer to Walmart and I got pulled over by a cop. Over where my trailer is, is the Indian reservation and the, and the, the speed, the mileage per hour changes like 55, 45, 35, 25. It just, it's really weird, bro. It'll go from like 70, you're just in mountains, all of a sudden 25 because you're in residential. And it's just, it's kind of, bro, you really got to be paying attention just in your speed or you're going to be speeding. And I got pulled over by a cop doing 45 and a 25 and a 65 and a 45. Pulled me over. He said, I'm going to give you a break. But if I ever see you come through here again, breaking the law, I'm going to crack you. So after I got in the fight, I'm going to California. I'm driving. I'm on the phone with someone. I'm not paying attention. I get pulled over. I look to my rearview mirror. The same cop. Damn. Pull over. I get my license. I said, you said you're going to crack me. Go ahead. And he sees me. My shirt has blood on it. He sees my eye. He sees us. What happened? Like I just got in a fight. He tries. Like cops do, I guess. I don't know. Tried hard to get me to make a report. There's no way, bro. I'm a grown man to find another grown man. And then he started talking like he was going to bust me for being, he said, where's the other person at? Were you, were you the aggressor? And I was like, damn, I shouldn't even say nothing about getting a fight. But I mean, it's totally obvious. I'm covered in blood and I got this black eye. So I'm like, dude, I ain't pressing no paper. I, this is nothing. I, I'm not going to come out of it. And, and that's all. Mutual, mutual fight. So he gives me a ticket. He tells me to step out and handcuffs me. And I think he's going to arrest me for the fight. Full handcuffs me. Puts me in the back of the cop car. I'm not saying shit. I don't know what's happening. I'm just like bummed out. How am I going to get my rental out of impound? I wonder what their jail is like here. What's going on? But instead he takes me to the courthouse, not the jail. He don't say nothing to me. He's just like, hey, you need to press charge of this fight. I say, no, I'm not going to do it. He says, step out. And he handcuffs me. I'm like, wow, he's going to bust me for the fight then. So I just don't say nothing. And I get in the back of the cop car, and I'm like, well, at least I can bail out. I'm not on parole. He don't take me to jail. He takes me to the courthouse. I just keep turning off, damn it. Takes me to the freaking courthouse, man. Because they said, since I'm from California, they would not trust me to pay my fines. So they took me to the courthouse, said 550 bucks you have to pay, set up a payment plan, drove me to my car, I'm out of there. So now what do I do? I got to Talk to the company. What do I tell the company, bro? I got, do I got to tell the company the truth? What happened? Well, I'm not going to cover for this dude. If anything, bro, part of me feels bad, even though I don't have it in me. And me and Green Eye Jim and I had the same conversation. She said, you're just not built like that. Part of me feels like I should have said something to the company weeks ago about this guy being a freaking drunk. Hey, HR, you know, you got this dude showing up with whiskey and his coffee. I mean, just snitching apply to work, maybe saving lives, dude. Who wants this drunk guy at work with whiskey in his coffee? Tall boys at lunch, more whiskey, and just drunk, blackout, drunk 24-7. Dude, we got an issue. We got a liability. This dude's reckless. He's dangerous. Of course, I'm not going to do that. I'm not built like that. But after the fight, what am I going to do? Just act like nothing happened? Because if I had just, first of all, I can't. I'm going to look in my eye. And what the boss say? What happened? I'm supposed to say nothing. I fell down. Come on, dude. I'm not in prison no more. You guys tell me that, right? Why don't you have to cover for this freaking drunk ass fool? So I text the boss and told him straight up what happened. This fool got drunk at, at lunch on whiskey and starts swinging on me. That's what happened. What, else, what am I supposed to say? Because if I did not, if, if if disrupted on the rug, which it couldn't be done anyway, look at me. I would have to live with this guy in a trailer, drive an hour to work and work with them. I'm not living with this fool. fool. Fuck this fool, dog. 
and pulled my shirt over my head. It hit me and cheap shot me five times in the side of my head. After we already checked him, bro, it was done. Like, I stopped, like, okay, you're good? No, he, he, bro, that's a disrespect. I, I can't live with a dude like that. I'm not going to live cohabitating in a little tiny trailer with some dude who gets blackout drunk and who already proved to be a snake by pulling my shirt over my head. And I'm supposed to act like everything's cool. I can't do it. Me and him have gotten in upteen arguments, bro. We all bump heads all the time, man, me and this dude. I'm surprised we just barely now got in this fight for the first time. We don't get along because I don't get along with drunks, dude. But the people who are just talking shit and just drunk and just being drunk and arrogant and egotistical and telling you how badass they are and telling you where you're wrong at and everything right they do. I mean, he's the type of dude, like, look at one time, look at me just tell you. He was talking about one of our coworkers making $75 an hour. I go, wow. That was just my response. Wow. I didn't really, and he goes, wow. Why, wow. Why does that surprise you? He has certs. He has this. I don't understand why you'd say, wow. Why would you think to yourself? And I'm just like, don't you just love alcohol? Like, I didn't really put any thought into the wow. It was rhetorical. Like, basically, I just don't care. Like, okay, cool. He makes 75 bucks an hour. Whatever. Wow. You know, nice. Neat. Okay. Whatever. And you want to make it a whole thing, bro. That's everything you say, he'll pick apart. You say somebody picks it apart, analyze it. Oh, why'd you say this? You could have said this. Wait a minute, stop. Don't you feel this way? Why don't you feel this way? I can mean, just do you want us to argue all the time, bro? And Proverbs 18 and 2 says, a fool has no interest in being and understanding you. They just want to argue to hear their own self-talk. And that's the situation we have here. Proverbs 18 and 2 from the word of God says, a fool is not trying to understand you. They're just trying to argue to hear their self talk. And that's how this dude is 24 seven. So I'm supposed to live with him in a tiny trailer and drive with him an hour to work after he did this to me, bro. Pull my shirt over my head, cheap shot at me. All scantless, spilt beer in my car, a big tea. He wakes up first thing in the morning, a beer. No, I don't want this drunk fucker around me, dog. No, enough's enough, man. No, I don't go to bars because I don't want to be around drunks. I shouldn't have a drunk forced on me at work, bro. I should be able to go to work and enjoy the company of sober people. Should I not? Should I not be able to just go to work and be around sober individuals? Or do I got to go around this dude who's been drinking whiskey all day? And he thinks he's, he thinks he's the shit. And he's just cocky and arrogant. He don't wear a hard hat. I don't have to. No, bro. Hell no, dog. So, I texted the boss, said this fool got drunk on whiskey at lunch, and took off on me. Because that's exactly what happened. What else, what else am I supposed to say? Is there anything else I can say? Fuck. This thing's pissing me off. So... Then, and like I said, man, it's just, it's just out of line, dude. I don't know where my laptop case is. I don't know why this won't turn on. We got more to talk about. I'm going to tell you more. I'm going to tell you more, bro. Where my moderator's at? Of course I did the right thing. Screw these fools. What am I supposed to do, bro? Am I supposed to? I'm not covering for that fool. That dog. It's a bomb ass job with a bomb ass company. And I'm not going to um I'm not gonna lose my job. Cause this dude wants to get drunk on whiskey. Wanna call me a snitch because I told my boss what happened? Bro, I should have snitched up more than that. I, I two weeks ago, before the fight happened, I should have called HR and said this fool's a drunk. Someone's going to get hurt. How am I going to feel if he runs someone over with a forklift, bro, and kills somebody, dog? Do you, you you would work with someone drunk on whiskey? You would see a problem with that? So if I was a snitch, I would have told HR a long time ago. 
But of course, after a situation like this, I'm going to tell the foreman. If I just tell them nothing, they're going to find out anyway, and it looks like I'm hiding it, and both of us are gone. Why the hell would I do that? So that I don't snitch on this drunk? Get the hell out of here, bro. Screw him. Call what you want, dog. Call what you want. I don't even care. Do not care, bro. One bit. So I know where this bitch is. Am I testifying? Did I press charges? Nope. I just kept it real with the boss. Hey, told them what happened. Doesn't he deserve to know? The boss doesn't deserve to know. Two employees fought. I got love for the boss. I got love for the company, man. And I'm not going to cover for this prick, bro. I'm not going to cover for this prick. And just go to work like this and try to hide it. And then end up having to live with him. Then I got to live with them. Some dude who proved himself to be a snake. I don't trust someone like that. I don't trust someone who pulled my shirt over my head. That sounds like an enemy. That sounds like someone who would, who would do horrible things, bro. I'm not going to turn my back on someone like that. You think I'm going to comfortably sleep with someone like that? And just have to wake up in the morning and hear beer can open? Whiskey be pouring the coffee? Uh, all the, then here comes the shit talking because he's so badass and great at everything. I don't want that life, bro. Why should I have that life pushed off on me? Why should I lose my job? A good job with a good company. What? Why? Because this dude wants to get drunk. Make And it's not just... Dude, he makes life hell, bro. He makes life miserable. It's not just mine. I think he was already on his way out the door, bro. No one likes to be around that shit. You like being around it? Then you must be a drunk your damn self. And a matter of fact, there's another element to all this that I'm not telling you guys. So I don't want to say too much. But let's just say I gotta protect myself, man. I can't I can't drop my guard around someone who could be that snaky. It would happen again, dude. It would happen again. It would happen again, man. Boom, there goes the light. It would happen again. So I'm post to app. So I'm post to. Let me get this right. After I bought Baron Square, this guy rushed me, attacked me, he's drunk on whiskey. I throw a couple punches back. I'm like, stop, bro. We're working, tripping. He takes advantage of me stopping and being like, kick back. Pulls my shirt over my head. Hits me five times on the side of my head, bro. Look at my eye. And then I'm supposed to just be like, oh, no, that's cool. We're cool, homeboy. No, dude, if, if it would have been just a straight-up respectful fight, then it is. Dude, I would fought plenty of people on the streets, and afterwards, it's much love, homeboy. I could sling him a much love, homeboy, afterwards. But I'm not going to much love, homeboy, someone who just pulled my shirt over my head where I couldn't see and just... Beat me five times on the side of my head, dog. To me, that's cowardly chicken shit, homie. I don't respect it, dog. It's a snake, and I don't trust anyone who would do that. And he did it so quick and perfect that he's probably done it before. That's how you fight? I mean, maybe that's how you fight someone, and you're walking down the street, and they try to mug you. Or maybe that's how you fight someone who, like, disrespects your sister. That's how you fight a coworker at work. That's how you fight someone, a roommate, someone you live with, who's kind of a friend, someone you... You eat dinner with the night. That's how you're going to do it. I mean, sure, tempers got flared. He threw a punch. He threw a couple punches. Okay. Made us keep our distance. But the whole shirt over the head, bro, way too far, man. Way too far, dog. Look at That's not too far, man. Can you go too far? I think so. I think it's chicken shit, dog. So, uh, so I'm supposed to cover for him and just not say nothing to the boss. Even though the third coworker probably would have. And then my boss calls me, Chris, what happened? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. Why? Well, I heard there was an incident. No, no incident. Why would I do that? Why? So I can say, I didn't snitch on him. I didn't snitch on him. Hell yeah, there was an incident. You got a coworker, you got an employee who's a hardcore alcoholic. Can't control himself. So I posted this go. 
Montreal homeboy. Then move in a trailer with them and live in a tiny trailer with them and drive an hour to work with them. As he consumes his whiskey and gets all hell bent and drunk as hell. After this, after the shirt incident, which I'm telling you, the company would have knew anyway, there was a third person there. Plus there's 10 people there. What would happen if I would have came in the next day? Hi guys, reporting for work. Damn, what happened to your eye? Nothing. Um, I slipped and fell. Is that what some of you knacks really think should, should have been my course of conduct? Nothing. I slipped and fell. So I'm covering for this drunk prick now? All for the sake of that way you can't label me a snitch? No, a snitch would have been if I called the cops and pressed charges and said this fool assaulted me. Look at my eye. He assaulted me. When I wasn't looking, he pulled my shirt on my head and he hit me five times in the temple to where I had, dropped me to a knee. Thankfully, though, because I was able to blast up, homie. I'm glad I dropped. It changed the dynamic. Then I had control. I got him off me, pushing me into my car. But is that that's what I'm supposed to do? Say nothing happened? Try to cover for just cover? Nothing happened. Nah, nothing happened. I'm going to start a new job Monday with my finger like this. Not even facing the right way anymore. Do you look at my freaking finger, bro? Can you see my thumb? My thumb's hella worse. Look how freaking swollen my thumb is, dog. And I talked to a nurse today. She said, you're going to have to yank on and pull him out. So you're damn right. I called the boss and said, told exactly what that prick did. He got drunk at lunch, out of line, swung on me. Thought of the job site. That's what happened. I didn't say he rushed up on me and beat me and I was, and he attacked me and assaulted me. I said, we fought. He got drunk. We fought. So there you go. I took some responsibility for it. I mean, he punched me and I punched back. But then after a couple punches, I'm like, okay, stop. I've been in cell fights before. I fought friends. That's how you do it. It's like, what fool? What? You kind of mad over a Pinocchio game? What's up then, dog? Boom. You come a little punch in like, all right. Kick back, fool. You know, after a little bit. It's not this. That's losing control, bro. That's that, that's straight up out of line, bro. I don't, I don't trust someone who does this. I would never trust that guy again, and I would never be around him, and I would never drop my guard, and I certainly wouldn't sleep in a trailer with him. A snake like that? Plus, I'm tired of bringing around this alcoholic, dude. Why do I have to be around an alcoholic? I don't drink. Dude, I don't want to live with a fucking drunk, bro. Why, why do I have to live with a drunk? I didn't go pick a drunk old lady. I don't have drunk friends. I don't drink, but yet you're going to stick me in a trailer with a drunk, an alcoholic. And I, I just have to just take that. I don't think so. Why? Why would I have to take that? I have to take that shit. I don't have to, who wants to, by show of hands, dude, who wants to be around a drunk, bro? Is there, any, is there anybody out there who actually says, I like being around drunk people. I think people who are drunk on whiskey are fun to be around. Is there anyone out there who says that? Anyone saying, yes, I love it. I love to be around people after they take four or five shots. And they're drunk at whiskey. In fact, I like my coworkers that condition. Is there anyone out there that says, dude, I love it when my coworkers get hammered on whiskey at lunch? I think it's cool. I really like it. I enjoy that. Is there anyone out there who says that? I'm not saying it. I'm saying I hate it. I'm saying I put up with it for two months. I can't stand it. Let me tell you what else happened, dude. Let me just go ahead while I'm on it. While I'm at it. So they all had a shindig. A bunch of my coworkers had a shindig. I live in the trailer by myself. Some of them rented a house. Others have trailers. There's about 10 of us up there. They're having a shindig. They made chicken and rice, and they're hanging out in the house. The student I'm talking about, who I fought, the alcoholic, starts going off on other employees, browbeating them, saying he's better than them. They don't know what they're doing. He's faster, smarter, better, going to go further in the company. He's just a better worker, just a smarter guy. He's just great. And in fact, they're not great. In fact, they need to get it together. They don't know what they're doing. That was the conversation over dinner. Wow, how fun. Yeah, why don't you tell us how great you are and how sorry everyone else is? Well, the boss had enough of it. The head foreman tore into his ass and said, nah, dude, you don't know nothing. You're an idiot. You're a dummy. Tore into him and then left. And when he left, number two in charge, the other foreman said, yeah, dude, you really don't know nothing. You need to get together. So then this dude who I thought went in his room, lay down and licked his nuts and the next day, the boss said to him, dude, I don't know what's up with you. You get you messed up on alcohol and you start bashing people. You can't do that. 
We're co-workers. We're family. We're up here working together. You can't just start insulting and causing that separation and just hammering and browbeating people and just insulting everybody. And it's not only putting people down while he's lifting his up, himself up at the same time. I'm great. I'm the shit. I'm the best ever. You're horrible. You don't know what you're doing. You need to get together. You got a lot to learn as he's hammered on whiskey, blackout drunk. Who here want, would enjoy that? Who here wants that in their life? Anyone? I mean, dude, I if I if I met the most beautiful female in the world, and and I was like, man, let's kick it. And she's like, yeah, let's go have beers. I'm like, oh, never mind. Dude, I wouldn't even hang out with a fine ass female she's drinking, bro. Much less some hairy leg idiot. I'm not doing it, dog. Tired of beer. I don't want to bring around some alcoholic. I shouldn't have that forced on me. So you're damn right. I told the boss. Of course I did. This is what happened. Then I got a phone call from the owner and from HR. And they said, we heard there was an incident. And I said, yeah, there was an incident. This is what happened. And that's when HR said to me, man, you should have said something a long time ago. You should have told me a long time ago because that puts everybody at risk. That put, They can lose the company, bro. What if someone died out there, bro? You, you don't think it could ha couldn't happen? With all those big heavy equipment and the electricity and the sharp tools and the vehicles and the big forklifts and the cranes and all this stuff going on and someone's a blackout drunk on whiskey, you don't think that's dangerous? You don't think maybe just maybe someone might them get hurt and get hurt bad and they lose their company? Bro, I'll tell you, the boss doesn't want that. Is there is there a boss in the chat? Is there any bosses out there that'd be like, um, I'd be cool if my employee came drunk on whiskey. I'd be cool with that. Yeah, I'm cool if my employee came drunk on whiskey. Hell no, dog. They don't want that. And I, and as an employee, I don't want to be around it. So I got a call from the owner and HR. There was an incident. Yes, there was an incident. They said, do you still want to work? Yes, I do. I didn't say I'm hurt. I'm messed up. I don't know how I'll be able to do anything with this finger. I don't even know how I hurt. I don't even know how this happened. It, Cause I didn't hit. I didn't, I didn't punch with my left hand. I threw like three or four punches and they were all right. So either when I fell to the ground, with, when I took that knee, either I put my hand out to break my fall and did that, or when he was swinging, I'm trying to block and he punched my thing. So dude, that's what's up with it, homie. That's what's up with it, dog. Squabble with some freaking hardcore alcoholic. Man, and here we are. And I knew it was coming. It takes something. What's crazy on the surface, him and I are friends. We kick it every day. Comes to my trailer. We, we burn weed. We talk. We laugh and joke. But on my part, it takes a lot of effort, dude. I have to eat a lot of crow. And it just really takes a lot of effort into being cool and being this guy's friend. Way more effort than I didn't really want to put into it. Just because, oh yeah, actually, it's just so, it's hard to deal with, man. It's hard to deal with. It's hard to take in somebody that's just glorifying their self and then putting you down. And that's how it is all day long, dude. And it's just tough to be around. Or do, dude, I do my, my best friend, homeboy, Hot Rod, from my neighborhood, Rex and Acres. Love him. Where Selly's in the whole O wing. I couldn't stand being a Selly. I wanted him away from me. Bad. And when he got a bag to go to Corcoran, dude, I was happy, dog. I was like, yes, get out of here. Even though I love him, he's one of my best friends because he wants to argue about everything. He wants to argue about everything. He just likes it. Just like I said, Proverbs 18 and 2, a fool has no interest in understanding you and your point. They're just arguing to hear the self-talk. They they're not even trying to understand you. They don't even care your point. They don't care if you're making sense. You're not going to change your mind. Just want to argue. And dang, that's what it was like with Hot Rod, dude. Every day, bro. Oh, I'd be Chris here to answer a question. He'd be like, hey, what's, you ever read that book before? And I'd be like, yeah. Why did you read it? Why did you read that one and not this one? What did you think? Of, you know what I'm saying? Because it's the simplest thing. Hand me that spoon. Hand the spoon turns into an argument. Why did you hand to me with your right hand? How can you hand with your left? Could have got your left hand. Wouldn't that be easier? Dude, who wants that kind of nonsense all the time? He's like questioning your every move and just like, oh, bro. Charlie Holmes. So that's what happened. Look at my damn eye. And when I got pulled over, 
by the cop for speeding. He called the damn medic to look at me. And I told him no. But remember, I'm handcuffed in the back seat of the car. Thinking, what in the hell's going on? The pull for speeding, this cop takes me out and handcuffs me. And he called and the medics, the fire department came, looked in my eye, asked me how many quarters in a dollar, what's the date, what's your name, looking behind my, my ear is bruised even. I was getting nailed, dude, nailed. This dude ain't no slouch. I never said he was a slouch. I never said he was a punk. I never said he was soft. He, he's solid as a matter of fact. He, like, he runs six miles in the morning, works out with weights. He's not big, fat. He's, he's, he's on the short side. He's short, short little guy. But he's solid and he's strong and his hand is hard and knows how to hit. And he hit me with all his freaking might right here, dog. And I felt them. And they're coming quick. Boom, boom. And I'm just like, damn, my shirt's like this. I'm just like, fuck, dude, I'm in a tough position, man. I couldn't, I think he was holding it. How did I even get my head back out? You're just stuck, bro. You're just stuck. And I never tried that on nobody, bro. I never seen no one else do it. And I just couldn't believe it was happening to me. They pulled my shirt over and held it. And then you're just, you're screwed, bro. You're just screwed. You're just right there. Just, what can you do? And I, I had no, def I have no defense for that. Because I never think it'd be done for me. I've never gone into it saying, watch out, Splinter, for the old t-shirt trick. I never thought of that. I never thought to maybe maybe I had to stand back. Maybe I need to take it off. Maybe I have to just rip it in half. I mean, heck, but I'm definitely, bro, definitely. If I ever get in another fight again, dog, if I square off with some dude, I'm definitely going to take my T-shirt off or consider the situation like, bro, I'm not going to pull my shirt off my head because that sucks ass. I have no defense for it. I didn't expect it. I've never seen it done by anybody. I've been in many fights, bro. No one's ever tried on me before. I've never tried on anybody. I've seen many prison fights, fights on the streets. I've never seen anyone do it, bro. And this fool did it so slick like he done it before. Like that's, to me, it's just cowardly. I just say it's weak. I wouldn't do it to anybody. I wouldn't feel like I won a fight if I was squaring off with somebody and I pulled their shirt over and I, I wouldn't walk away like, yeah. I mean, maybe if I was getting mugged. Maybe if I was walking down an alley and some dude tried to attack me and he had a and he had a ski mask on and a filetto and he tried to take my wallet, maybe I would do some crazy trick. That's like throwing dirt in someone's eyes. And walk around with a handful of dirt. They do that. That's why in the hole, they don't like to give you top ramen powder because their words would be a... What if you had some top ramen powder in your hand? And you're going to fight and throw in someone's eyes. Same thing, bro. Took my vision away from me. Scandalous. Dirt bag. And we were, we'd already been chucking him, dog. And I stopped. See, here's what I learned about fighting. Always get off first. But I didn't get off first. He got off first. He came over swinging on me. I didn't expect it. Always get off first. And don't stop. And don't throw one punch. Throw combinations. And don't stop. And just keep going. And try to change the angle of the fight. And try to change elevation. Get low. Go for the body. Get up high. Go to the side. Throw a couple of jabs. And an uppercut. And overhand right. And, and But I didn't. I'm not thinking that. Because I'm not thinking we're going to the death. He's over swinging on me. So I swing back. I'm pretty much like. Get a hold of yourself fools. And I was thinking. What the hell? It work. Is there any Ormac guys around? Is there any safety guys? Where's the other employees? Joe's right here. Like dude. Kick back. Get a hold of yourself. That's the level I was on. Like, I'm going to stop. The thing we're stopped. And the next thing I know, boom, that's it, man. That is it, man. Next thing I know, wrap. Like five, six times, dude. Bro, but I ate him. Hey. Didn't knock me out. Should have gone for some uppercuts. He had my shirt over my head. He could have been like... And I'm sure his hand probably hurts. So, yeah, that's what happened, man. That's what happened. And to anyone who thinks I should have swept it under the, the rug and try to cover for this drunk-ass fool, bro, eat my ass, homie. That, that wasn't even an option, dude. I didn't even consider that for a minute. I didn't for one minute consider 
sweeping down the rug and trying to hide it. Because first of all, how? My parents going to give it away. Second of all, there was a third coworker there. Joe. Joe was right there. Joe saw it all. So if I went to work and they the next day and the boss said, hey, what happened? And I was like, oh, nothing. Nothing happened. I slipped and fell in the shower. And then they're like, I said, Joe, Joe, what? You know, and he's like, well, you know, but then I lied. Why'd I lie? I must have been an aggressor. Then I'm out of there, dude. Why? Because I covered for him. So why am I going to lie for this dude, bro, who pulled my shirt over my head? And I can't stand to be around him anyway because he's a straight alcoholic. But I'm supposed to lie to my boss for him? Got me. He got me. Dude, I don't want to be de demonetized. They got me fucked up, dog. Dude, you got me all the way fucked up. If you think I'm supposed to cover for him. I mean, maybe if there was no marks. Oh, yeah, for sure. Had he had not pulled my shirt over my head and we just threw a couple punches and stopped. Oh, absolutely, bro. Sleep under the rug. Cover for him. Not saying nothing. Tell Joe, hey, dog, kill game. We'll work that out. I mean, it would have still sucked living in the trailer with him and driving to work. Maybe I would have figured out something else, get my own place, drive my own car. But you for sure, bro, if it would just been those first couple punches. Yeah. But after the shirt thing, dude, and after this to my eye, and this is too much. I'm not going to cover for him. Now I don't want to be around him because now I don't trust him. I'm not going to. No. So I don't want to be repeating myself. But. Exactly. It's a career, not a prison. Exactly, Jason, a straight up idiot. Because there's no. If I would not have told, if I just went back to the trailer and just licked my nuts and then went to work the next day, they're going to say, what happened, bro? They have to report all injuries out there. They have to report all injuries, dude. They would see an injury and be like, whoa, well, what happened? Did you like fall and trip? Did you hit your face on a rock? Like, they're not just going to be like, See this and not say nothing. Oh, you think my boss and other coworkers are gonna see this and just not say nothing? Like, no, they're gonna want to know what the hell happened. Cause they're gonna keep track of all injuries out there, bro. It's a big deal. Workman's comp, people getting hurt. That's why they have the big sign on the wall. It's been 368 days since there's an injury at this location. There's been 369 days since there's been an injury at this location. They keep track of injuries, dude, very carefully. On my last job, I cut my hand. By accident. And it was with a dull razor blade. And I didn't tell no one. Of course, I kept that on the DL. And the next day at a safety meeting, the safety guy said, yeah, someone cut their hand yesterday. And I was like, the hell? It's not about me. How the hell do you know that? Yeah, you guys try to be more careful. How did he know, dude, that I cut my freaking finger, man? I don't know. But they keep track of injuries. So I would not have been able to go in there and be like, I just show up like this at work. Lip busted. Look at my hand. Finger facing the wrong way. Ah, ah, I can't pick that up. Ah, ah. Oh, nothing happened. And then they ask around. It would have came out, and he's got a busted lip, and I got a. Both of us are injured. What happened, guys? Nothing. Why don't you both get fired then? Because obviously you fought, and you're lying, and you don't want to keep it real. No, dude, I'm not going to buddy up with him and like try to sweep it on the table and just be all, let's get away with the dog. No way, because there's no, let's us. There's no us. It was him, me, two different people. What he did was out of line. And I'm not going to cover for him, bro. I'm not going to lie to my boss because I would have lost my job. It would have came out in the wash anyway. They would have known, dude, for, for sure. They would have known. Dude, people have probably seen it. They don't even know they got cameras out there. I'm sure probably Ormat did see it. It's just right there. Probably all kinds of people seen it that I don't even realize, dude. And then I say nothing happened. Then I covered up that I'm a liar. And I'm, and I'm supposed to cover up for this drunk dude? I'm supposed to let this dude take shots of whiskey at a bar on a lunch break and cover for him? No, nothing happened. No, nothing happened. Was my drink? No. Was he drinking? No. What said his name? Oh, fuck him. There's a lot of people that name. Was he drinking? No. Why would I do that? Why in the world would I do that? I wouldn't. And it would just, it would just happen again. The fight would have just happened again, man. Having to live with him. He's a hard, hard, hard alcoholic. And he blacks out. And we already know what kind of fighter he is. So if he'll do that, bro, he might do something to me in my sleep. 
What if we have a disagreement and we, and we call each other some names? It's like, F you, no, F you. I'm going to my room, go to your room. And he goes to his room and he sits and starts like dwelling on it. And he's blackout drunk. And he comes out and starts kicking me in the head or something. I said, I don't know. I mean, he did this. He put my shirt on my head. I would put nothing past him. I don't trust a dog. Snake move, snake move. It showed me a lot. The real color, the true colors came out. That shows you a lot by the type of individual who would do that. And then we're talking the type of person, dude, because I'm supposed to be his coworker, somewhat of a friend, a roommate, someone he, who he knows. And to do that, the shirt thing, why couldn't he just come from the shoulders and just give me a head of fade and afterwards be like, you know, maybe we need to stay. That's not a head of fade, dude. This is Pulling your shirt over someone's head is not a head of fade. That's a sneak, snake tactic, dog. And I had no defense for it because I didn't even think it was uh, going to be a situation. I'd never seen anyone do it. I never heard about it. I just, I guess I knew somewhere in the back of my mind that it could be a possibility. When, when it was happening, I was like, oh, he put my shoe on my head. Damn. And, and then think about this for a minute, bro. Like I said, let this sink in. Okay. L- listen, if you and I are fighting and I go to punch you, you're going to see my fist coming and you're going to. You might even move a little bit, might, but do when you have your shirt over your head and someone punches you, I don't see it coming. So I take the full brunt of it. I don't get to flinch. I don't get to tighten my face. I don't get to like do nothing. I'm just boom, hard as he can. Boom, hard as he can. Boom, hard as he can in the head again. Boom, hard as he can again. Boom, hard as he can again until I drop to a knee. What in the biz up, dog? That's that's fair and square. That's how you fight your coworker. That's how you fight someone who's your roommate, who you've been spending time with. That's dirtbag shit, dog. That's how. That's just hell no, bro. And I'm supposed to cover for that dude and trust that dude and continue working with him and live in a trailer and drive to work and just be like, what do you mean? I'm having my eye. No. Uh. Uh-uh. No way. Bro, I'm glad he's gone. I feel like I took one for the team. I feel like probably everyone at the company hates his ass because no one wants to be around an alcoholic. I feel like when they hear that he's gone, they're like, yeah, mm, heck yeah, bro. I know that dude, Joe, that was with me, that went to the bar, to use the ATM. I know he don't like him because the drug dude stays on Joe's ass, bro. He's always picking on him, talking crap to him, calling him F-A-G-G-O-T. F-A-G-G-O-T, homeboy. You want to be called that at work? By some blackout drunk on whiskey. Dude, he badgers Joe. He, he treats him poorly, dog. And I know that Joe's like, yeah, when he's gone. Same with these other dudes. Dude walking around. I'm not wearing a hard hat. I don't have to. That's one of the most basic rules, homeboy. PPE. Personal protective equipment. Your still toe boos, boots, and boos. He probably does have still toe boots. Still toe boots, hard hat, safety glasses, dude. Basic. You must have. But not according to this guy. He takes his hard hat off because he don't have to wear one. Everyone has to wear a hard hat but him. And ain't no one going to say nothing to me about it. What kind of a piece of shit is that? That would act and say that? Would you want someone like that in your company? Who just says, no, I don't have to have a hard hat. No, I'm the only one out here who doesn't have to have one. Because I'm all that in a big bucket of boats. I, I'm special. I'm better. I'm the shit. I don't need a hard hat. Dude, that's... No one wants that around. No one wants that kind of person around, bro. Uh-uh. And I think I took one for the team. I think, dude, look what it took to get rid of him. He's gone, and I think everyone's happy. I know I'm happy I don't have to be around drunk, because I don't go to bars, dude, because I don't like alcoholics. I don't date a, an alcoholic girl. I don't have alcoholic friends. I don't go to bars. I don't go to anywhere where there's going to be people drinking, because I don't like being around people who drink. So I'm supposed to go to work and have someone forced on me. Hey, good morning. It's 7 a.m. You're at work. And look at this guy here. He's drunk on whiskey. And you're going to be around him all day. Lucky you. Hell no. Why? Why do I have to be Why do I have to be forced that on me, bro? I don't want that. That ain't right. Dude, I avoid bars because I don't like drunks. But yeah, I'm going to go to work and get one forced on me. Good morning. 7 a.m. Bright and early. I want you, you and him to go over and do this. And I'm walking over to work with him, and he's just drunk, talking out of the side of his neck, cussing, using God's name in vain. You know, you know what he says? He says he's about God, family, work, and all that. And I go, God, what God? 
because I tried to tell them about Jesus. They was, oh, I won't bow down anybody. I got news for you. Every, every knee will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes, whether he wants you or not. Every knee will bow. I asked him, do what God? Because he was talking about, I put God first. You know what he told me? The sun God. Worship the sun by my ancestors. Look at the kind of person we're dealing with here, man. God, family, country. What God? Jesus? No, the sun. That's what we're dealing with, bro. I, I don't I don't want it in my life. Like if I like if we were like friends and you start acting like that, I would just quit accepting his phone calls and just say, Don't come over no more. Because you're too drunk and I don't like to be around it. But when I go to work, it's just forced on me. You just have to just take it on the chin, huh? Check it out, Chris. And go to work and be drunk all day long. Alcoholic. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not going to live with one. None of that. So I don't have to. So that's what happened, bro. We had to fight. For those of us who are joining, it all started because he lost his wallet. Couldn't find his wallet. He, 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 he zelled me all kinds of money to my card since he didn't have his card. And I'm thinking, damn, dude. Why does it have to be my card, bro? Now it's like, now I have to do business with you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, now now he's bugging me to go to the store. Now we got to ride together. Now I have to deal with him. Where if he didn't send the money to my card, I could just kind of ignore him at work and then get off work and really ignore him and just kind of like feed him with a long spoon. But now he sends money to my card and I got to deal with him. I got to ride with him. I got to go to the store with him. Damn. I don't like being around this fool, man. Drunk, and egotistical, arrogant. All right, man. So we go to the ATM, pull the money out. And they go to a bar. I guess I should have knew better, bro. I didn't. I didn't think he was gonna sit down, and start taking shots at the bar. Three, four, five shots. Gets in my car. He's passed out. You know what's crazy, dude? Listen to this. I knew this girl who had all kinds of freaking. I knew this girl who had all kinds that she lived by a bar and she was an alcoholic. And she would have this guy come to her house all the time. When they left the bar, he's drunk. You don't want to drive home. Can I crash on your couch? She'd say. She'd say, sure. She had another couch. So this dude would always come crash on her couch after the bar. But after a while, you know what happened? His sweat, his alcohol, his sweat ruined the couch. From his face, from the alcohol coming out of his pores, that nasty-ass whiskey, bro, just coming out while he's laying on the couch. Ruined the couch. Ruined it. And when this fool was in my back seat, when we left that bar, and he had a full bottle of whiskey, he drank it. We went in the bar to use the ATM. He took shots. He got in my back seat. He had this food. He was spilling to rental, bro. He spills his tea, spills his fries, disrespecting my rental. He gets in. He passes out. And I look back at him. Dude, he started changing color right in front of my eyes. Dude, I started seeing like wrinkles pop out. His skin started start turning yellow and like sweaty. Because I was looking at him, and I was telling the other co-worker in the, in, the, in the passenger seat, I was like, look at him, dude. Look at him. Look at our co-worker. He's back there asleep. He's back there passed out on whiskey. And we're going to be at the job site in 10 minutes. Look at him. Hot mess, bro. Is that a good employee? This guy? Does he care about the company? Does he love the company? Is he safe to work around? This guy? So I'm looking at him, and I just see his face like go from like... Start turning yellow. It's crazy looking. And like sweat. And I literally see him. I'm not even joking. Like wrinkles pop out. Like, like it just started affecting his countenance and appearance. Dude, the whiskey started changing him. Yeah, no. It might be that girl's couch. Then the guy's sleep. So, dude, yeah. Uh -uh. Charlie Holmes. Charlie Holmes. That's what happened. That's what happened, bro. Um, Yeah. And... I don't know what else to say, bro. I've been doing this for a while. How about how about a couple weeks ago? We drive, we drive from Nevada, our trailer in Gerlock, Nevada, to Bakersfield. He's from Bakersfield. Eight hour drive. He's drunk. I'm gonna drive because he's drinking. But guess what? Like halfway, he's like, pull over. Pull over, you're following too close. You're using the brakes. All of a sudden, I don't, I'm not driving good. Is it that I'm not driving good, or is he just wanting to complain because he's drunk and he's being arrogant? Pull over. Wait a minute. I thought I was supposed to drive because you're drunk. 
oh, okay, you want to drive now because I'm not driving good, but you think you might drive better. I don't know why I want to air quote you. You think you might drive better on a, in a blackout stupor than what I'm doing? I'm sober, oh boy. I'm driving just fine. Pull over. So then this guy gets behind the wheel. Drunk driving. We get to his house in Bakersfield. We, we pull up. I call an Uber. I go home. We're supposed to leave Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. He calls me the next day, Saturday morning. Let's leave. Let's leave. I'm all, what? Bro, we came to Bakersfield on Friday night to, to, from Friday to Sunday so we could spend the weekend at home, get some things done. There's nothing for us up there, bro. Why do you want to be in a trailer in the middle of the desert? I'm a why, why, why? We came here Friday to Sunday, then Saturday morning. I'll tell you why, because he wanted to drink. And he probably couldn't drink in his pad. Probably lady probably mad at him. So I, let's leave. I was like, no, I'm not leaving, bro. Go ahead. If you want. I'm not leaving. So the next day he does decide to leave. And he's drunk. And he calls me up. And he's like, hey, I've been sending, I've been sending messages to you. You're not getting them. I said, well, are you sending them to the right number? He goes, yeah. I'm drunk, asshole, but I'm not that drunk. Who wants to be talked to like that, bro? I'm over here minding my own business. This guy calls me and says, hey, I've been sending you text. I go, are you sure send to the right number? Because I haven't got him. Yeah, asshole. So I said, well, I've been getting texts from other people, motherfucker. And he goes, oh. So, I mean, if you're going to dish it out, I'm going to dish it right back. And then I said, I've been, I, this, this was started a whole fight with us a couple weeks ago. After that exchange, I said to him, I said, hey, bro, I had a rough weekend. He's going to come pick me up. We're going to drive eight hours to Nevada. I go, I had a rough weekend, man. I kind of just want to just be left alone. Did I have a rough weekend? Not really. I said that because I didn't want him to talk to me. Because I'm going to be eight hours with this dude who's drunk, bro. And I can't think of anything more gross. I can't think of anything less fun. I can't think of anything more miserable than an eight-hour drive with a drunk who's over-opinionated, arrogant, egotistical, likes to argue, never wrong, nitpicks. Dude, no thanks. So I told him, hey, bro, I've had a rough weekend. And he's like, oh, so I'm supposed to be on my P's and Q's? And I, as I know, I didn't say that. Basically, I just want to be left alone. You don't have to be on anything. But I basically, when you come pick me up and we leave in the car, like, don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. Um, I'll have my earphones in. I'll be watching YouTube shorts. Leave me alone. And then he comes over and he comes over and he has an open container of beer and he's drunk, bro. He comes spilling out of the car and it's snow. Even, even Sue's like, what the hell? Ask Sue if you don't believe me, bro. Sue's like, what in the fizzuck is that dude on? He looks like a pile of poop thawing out of that car. Just all blackout drunk. He's like, we're going to have a talk before he get in my car. I said, I'm staying. Bounce. Why? So I'm not going to have some drunk to pull up and lecture me about getting in his car. Some dude just blackout drunk on whiskey. We're going to have a talk before we get in my car. Dude, bounce on, but I don't want your car anyway. You think I want to spend eight hours with some drunk? So then he left. I took a train. I had a Miss Monday at work. And bro, it's been nothing but hell ever since I started dealing with this dude. Nothing but hell. Why? Because it's alcoholism. Because when you're an alcoholic like that, it affects everything. It affects your job, your life. It affects the people around you. Dude, because he's a very disrespectful, man. He's a disrespectful person. I got a rental, dude. If you go on my rental right now with a $300 deposit, if you go on my rental, it smells like beer. My rental smells like beer. I don't drink beer. I just smell like beer. It's like, hey, this prick a ride. And he's back there spilling beer or just, how disrespectful is that, man? But now I got to worry about getting a beer smell out of my car so I get my $300 deposit back because I gave some alcoholic a ride and he disrespectfully spilled it. He did have a, a tea this big and he's back there all drunk and I turn a corner and he falls over. He can't even keep himself upright. I turn a corner and he falls over and he smashes the tea, tea all over my car, man. The rental! So... Enough of that. Enough about that. Enough about that. That's happened. It's where we're at. My finger hurts like nobody's business. And let me tell you this. I'm a straight up guitar player. 
I'm a guitar player. How about this little tiny lick? Rage Against the Machine lick. Look, I messed up. Killing in the name of... Ow! Move that slide. I can't do it, dog. I can't do a ham roll with this piece of sausage. I'm supposed to go. That's right. That's killing the name of. I can't do it, dog. How about. So yeah, bro. And then the beginning of course goes. Which I can play because it only needs these two fingers. Can't do it. Never say can't, mother bizucker. So there it is. I laid it all out there for you. That's what happened. Let me tell you something else that's crazy that happened. Let this change directions. And I probably messed up with this. I probably was in the wrong mind frame. Because when Green Eye Jim and I we had that problem over my birthday. Which I already feel like I was in the wrong. Uh, I feel kind of uh, dumb. I'm actually embarrassed, bro, about how all that panned out. Because I expected more of my birthday. Yeah, you know, I'm a grown ass man. Ten days for my birthday, I like flipped out. But what it was, because I was all day long at work. It was a build up. I'm thinking when I go home, there better be a birthday message on my text for me with a cake emoji and all. And there was nothing. So I was like, oh, snarf, snarf. We got an argument. Then I went to YouTube live and said, we're, we're no more. Which is stupid. Dude, like 50 people. Hear me now. Are you guys? 50 people went to her Instagram. Like, hey, old girl. Heard you explain together no more. Didn't you need your shoulder to cry on? I asked her, who are they? I want to know who these guys are. Dude, that's such a scandalous thing, bro. It's like when a homeboy goes to jail, you get other homeboys showing up. Hey, to add his old lady's pad. Hey, what's up? Your shoulder cry on? Do you need me to help raise money for Bell? Want me to empty the trash? Dude, I had a homeboy go to jail and I was showing up to drop his money off, money off to his old lady Bell amount. And when I pull up, another car pulls up. So one of the homeboys, I was like, what are you doing here? I was like, going to pitch in on the Bell. He's like, no, I just came over to see if she wanted me to empty the trash. She's scandalous, book. She's scandalous. Homeboy's in jail and you're coming over to ask this lady, hey, oh, I want to empty the trash. I mean, dude. When the cats are play, when the cats away, the mice will play, or what? What is that? I just think it's dirtbag, bro. I've never been to one to find out. It's like it's like because I have no options, bro. Just hear about someone single. It's kind of like hunting a wounded animal. Like your your homie like shot a deer with a an arrow and it hit its leg and it's like you're following the blood trail and it's wounded and you're like following and hunting it. A wounded animal. That's what it's like. I'm going to go date this chick who just got out of a relationship. Not date her, but hit her up. Hey, hi. You still want to talk to? I'm here for you. Um, It's not you. It was him. I mean, you're beautiful. What would he not like you for? I mean, uh, I don't know what the problem was. I don't, I don't want to pick sides, you know. I just, I just I just want you to know I'm here to support you. And, you know, I'm sorry that happened. And, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't sweat it. I mean, you know, I'm going to get the piss out of my dog. What? So, yeah, all these people, bro, went there and said, Hey, homegirl. What's that? Hey. Dude, that's dirty. Dirty, bro. And like I said at the very beginning of this live, how crazy is this, man? Well, it's been a long life. At the beginning of this live, I said this, man. I said this. 
when I was a kid, and this got me thinking, man. I feel like this is YouTube in a nutshell. Because when I was a kid, bro, I had a gray Gordon Smith shirt. It was gray, and it said Gordon Smith all over it in blue. And I, and, and I liked it. And I wore it one year, and then we had a summer vacation. And I went back to school for another year, and I still had it. It still fit me. I guess I didn't grow. And I wore it to school, and this kid said, hey, you wore that shirt to school last year. And it really embarrassed me, man. I felt embarrassed. I was like, well, well so he's like, that's, you wore that last year. It's like last year's clothes. You can't, you know, bring it in this year and you wear it again this year. And I'm like, well, why not? Like, it still fits. It doesn't have holes in it. And I was like, man, okay, I, I won't wear anymore. I don't understand, like, getting clowned on and made fun of because I'm wearing a shirt that I had last year in school. The thing still fits. But anyway, okay. I'll play by your rules. I'll throw the damn thing away. Then I got a Metallica and Justice for All t-shirt. Never forget it. I went to Midnight Records and bought it. Metallica and Justice for All. And I wore the thing to school. And this kid said, hey, why do you got that brand new t-shirt on? You can't wear a brand new t-shirt like that. You, you, that shirt needs to be worn in and old. Like you've been supporting Metallica for a long time. And you've been to multiple concerts. And you just, you're not saying, what are you, a new fan? You just start liking Metallica. You just heard about them. You know, the, the record comes out. You run out and get the shirt. Is that what it is? And I'm just like, bro, what the hell? This guy attacking the shirt's too old. This guy attacking the shirt's too new. That's what my comment section are like. Dude, when I first showed the black eye and I was like, hey, I lost a fight. So many people, bro. And if they didn't say it, they wouldn't like someone else who said it. But just so many people coming at me negatively. You need to be accountable, they like to say. You're too old for that. Grow up. Dude, they have no details. All I do is show a black eye and say I lost a fight. They don't know if I got jumped, if I got mugged, carjacked, cheap shotted. They don't really know what the situation. I just said something happened. And they're just so quick to jump. You're too old for that. What, to get rushed? Tell the guy who rushed me then. Hey, I'm a little too old. I don't, I don't get I don't get like people putting age limits on me. Many of people too. I wouldn't say if it was only one person. Like one person will say it, and like 55 people will like it. That's the cheerleaders. Like the other day, someone will make a negative comment about me, and it got six likes. Someone else made a negative comment about me, it too got six likes. Someone else, yet another, came and made a negative comment about moi, and it too got six likes. You know what I pictured in my head? Six little pieces of poop, like. They see like a negative comment about Splinter, like, let's go. Let's go like that. Six little freaking pieces of caca, homeboy. Pound it. Pound it, homie. So, the trolls are thick with it. They say I need to be accountable. Be accountable. And I say, bro, I don't make that much money to need an accountable. And I keep track of my own money. I don't think I need to hire a person to come in and help me fix my money. So I don't understand people keep saying accountable. I can't afford an accountable right now. I don't make enough money to get one. Dude, accountables are like for rich people. Like Splinter, be accountable. Can't afford one of those. What are you talking about? So, and they're just so quick to say I'm just too old to fight. Bro, it's not like I went out at a bar looking for it. I, I, yeah, goodness gracious. So quick to freaking get on get on that ass, huh? You guys ain't nothing nice. But look what happened. Look what happened. I got the company gave me a job. Supposed to go to Monday. It's in Nevada. Reno, Nevada. I don't really have a place to live. And I'm wondering if I can even work with my hand like this. Do my look at my finger, it's not facing the right direction. You see this? I don't, it's not facing like the right direction. My finger is not. Look at that. I don't know. So it's, and if I, if I bump it, ah, if I hit, ah, and I don't know if you can see it. This is even worse. My thumb, bro. Please tell me you can see my thumb. So I got to go to work Monday and somehow work with these digits, dude. Look at that. The difference in the two thumbs there. One's hella swollen, jacked up. And also, something to do with my ribs. Damn. Every time I get in a fight, my ribs hurt, man. I got in a fight with this one guy this one time. I don't want to go into the, the whole thing, why or whatever. 
but he was a big buff ass dude and he used to be a prison guard and there's some words were exchanged and this and that blah blah and um anyway i showed up these apartments later and he was there looking for me wanting to fight i didn't know it and when he see me he's like oh there he is and i was like oh, here we go did he use a big a big ass dude. He was a prison guard, homie. He looked like he ate weights. Arr, steroids, all big ass guy, man. Big buff, tall, a lot of mass. And he seen me, he's like, there he is. And he came over and when he punched me, it knocked me out, knocked me down. But I woke up with a knot in the back of my head. And I was like, did he punch me like in the back of the head from the front? What's up with this knot? And then I think, oh, the knot could be when I hit the ground. Cause all I had was a big old knot and then my ribs hurt for like a month, dude. Damn, my ribs hurt. And all I'm guessing is when I was knocked out of the ground, that full boom booted me. But you know what I did? I jumped up and I ran up homeboy Joey's pad and I got a big old 11 and I came back out and I was like, what's up, fool? And he went over to his car cause he had, he had his own billet on his car, but in the trunk. He was trying to open it like this without turning his back on me. And I can hear the key, like, he's, like, trying to find the keyhole. And I'm in front of him, like, this, what's up, what's up? And he's, like, trying to get his trunk. Whoa! He never did get his trunk. But my ribs hurt at that time, and my ribs hurt now. Even when I got jumped in Wasco reception over a bad call. That dude, Steve, put that bad call on me. I fought that dude, Littlewood. First, I fought Mountain Bike Mike 101. And then I fought Littlewood one-on-one, and then they jumped me. And I had a broken nose, both eyes black, but that was nothing. The thing that hurt me was my ribs. Damn, what happened to my damn ribs? And now again, <clears throat> hurts when you cough, huh? <clears throat> so that's what's up with that. <clears throat> I, I got to, I'm supposed to be at work, Reno, Monday morning. I have nowhere to live in Reno. Nowhere to live. I made some calls trying to rent a room, I would have stayed up to sleep in my car. I don't care. I'll go to work, 7, 3.30, get off work, and just go drive around, maybe Walmart parking lot. I don't know. I'll do what I have to do. But currently, no no spot there, bro. So I'm not sure how I'm going to figure that out. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go live later on tonight. This slide basically dealt with the black eye. I probably ranted and rambled a lot. Look at it. it looks like you can see like a people with it, with it closed up. Huh? Dude, this is black. This wasn't yesterday. This wasn't black. It keeps getting worse and worse. It's swollen all right here. And he didn't even hit my eye. He hit me right here. It's all sore right here. My bru my ear is bruised. Took one for the team, dog. A lip. That ain't shit. Yeah. How would I look with mascara? I don't know how long it's going to take to heal. That's a good one. So we're going to go live tonight, though. To talk about some other shit, isn't it? And you know what I'm going to start doing? I know I've said it before, but look what I got. Look what I got. Yeah, it's three times coming out here. Oh, I know. Yeah, we're going to have to get you. Like my ring light. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Look what I got. Green light. I'm gonna I know I've said it before. And if you want to call me a fat mouth liar, go ahead. But I am gonna start hitting hard with the content. I need to, bro. I'm by the way, I'm not making forty five dollars an hour no more. That was prevailing wage. That was forty five dollars an hour with overtime. Big old fat check, bro. But I never end up getting caught up. I missed a lot of work and it's like Snarf, snarf. Now I'm back to 25 an hour, 40 hours a week, which is like eight hundred dollars. That's not that much. And I have a rental car. You know how much my rental car is? I'm a stuttered. You know how much my rental car is? Fourteen hundred dollars a month, seven hundred thirty dollars every two weeks to drive this rental car. But I have to have it. Remember the CarMax? Yeah, I went to CarMax. I got approved on the phone from CarMax in Las Vegas. I went into Bakersfield. I got pre-approved, $300 deposit, go in there and do the damn thing. And I go in. Why is the phone acting weird? 
Why is it acting weird? This is my uh, charge. Anyway, I go to CarMax, and those fools accused me of making the check stub. I came in. I had an appointment for 1 p.m. I'm pre-approved, $300 deposit. I bring my, you know, and I, I go in, and they're just like, that ain't no check stub. Dude, just clowned on me, homeboy. Accused me of fraud. Accused me of trying to commit a felony in their store. They violated my consumer rights. You know what consumers' rights say? That if they deal with you differently in the store than they did on the phone, violate consumer rights. If they're on the phone saying, yeah, this, I got this, we're going to take care of this and that, and you show up and they're like, uh-uh. Then they're judging you on your parents. They violate your consumer rights. Jimmy Dirty, homie, straight up two different managers, not one, but two, said to me, you made this check stub. So I didn't get a car from CarMax. $430 a month I was going to have to pay for a 2017 Jeep. I was glad about it. Now I'm in this other car. One of those little tiny ones, a Chevy Spark. You know, the little half, half a car. It looks like a female in college would drive it. A college-aged female working at Starbucks, a boy who plays tennis every Thursday, would drive the car I have. But I got at least it gets me there and back. So, uh, bro, I don't know, man. I got to figure out, A, how to get a car. See, I burn bridges, bro. Sometimes I get mad and burn bridges because my stepmom, my stepmom would be perfect person to co-sign. And if we were getting along, she would co-sign for me to get a car. I know she would because I'm doing good and I'm working. But we had a falling out, dude, and I said mean things. But, oh, let's forget about that for a minute. Did you guys read the comment from the fake green-eyed Gemini? It's on the community tab. I pinned it. Someone, someone went through the trouble to make an account that says Green Eye Gemini, but there's no photo. Hers has a photo. Hers is like Green Eye Gemini 9896 or something. This is like Green Eye Gemini, blah, 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 blah. No photo. But they came on and said, hey, guys, this is GEG. I hate to say it, but me and Splinter broke up because he's using again. You know, keeping your prayers. So some troll, bro, so desperate to tarnish my reputation made a fake account pretending to be green eye Gemini and accusing me of using and saying that we broke up because of it. That's gnarly, bro. And the real GEG saw it and said, well, the real GEG, please stand up. Like I'm right here. Suck a fish. Nice try. Cause that's lame doggy dog. That's lame. I mean, why do people try to make bank accounts, dude, just to come out and try to convince people that I'm, I'm using it. Why do they, Dude, why are they try aiming for my head like that? I wonder why. Is it jealousy? Why are people coming for me, dude? That bad. They go through the trouble to make a fake account to come in and just accuse me of something. To try to convince people. Bro, that's scandalous. That I think that's dude, that's one of the things, homie. There's in Proverbs, there's is it in Proverbs? There's six six things that God hates, seven that he detests. I don't want to mix up scripture, but there's something like that in the Bible. Sixteen gods hates, seven things he detests. It's in the book of Proverbs. And one, it, it, it's it's a feet quick to rush into evil, the shedding innocent blood, and false report on your neighbor. Making a false accusation, bro, against someone is wicked. If I know you didn't do something, but I if I know you didn't steal a car... But I go everyone and say, hey, that person stole the car. That's wicked, dude. That is wicked, and that is scantless, and that's a dirt bag. And I don't know what kind of individual would be capable of that. I would not be capable of it. I would not go around to everybody, hey, you know what this guy did? And accuse them of something they didn't do. I'm not made like that, bro. That's wicked. That's a dirt bag. And that's what these people have stooped to, homie. Making accounts to accuse me. Accuser of the brethren. Nice try. Bro, you can eat my ass. Eat it. So, that's what I'm dealing with. That's what I'm dealing with, homie. But look, the reason why I said I'm not making $45 an hour no more and no more overtime, straight up $25 an hour, 800 bucks a week, probably what I'll be making. Expensive car payment. Have to find some place to live in Reno and not to pay for the house down here. Look at all the bills. So what I'm going to do, and I need to do something I should have done this a long time ago. I need to incorporate, I need to take YouTube and for what it is, use it for what it is, a second job. 
the second revenue stream. I'm a freaking idiot, bro, because I have so much bomb videos. I could be sitting here and goes, what is up? Point of view crew. Ciao. Push a cord. 15 minute video. Thumbnail. Give it to you guys. You'll eat it up. You'll love it. And then I can probably pay some bills. That's the plan. Actually get a car. So, dude, I got to start doing way more videos, man. I have to. For you, for me. And I'm more, I'm happier when I do them. I'm a happier person when I'm making videos. I love it. I love talking to you guys. I love creating content. I love coming on here and sharing stories. I love when you guys come in the, con, in the comments and we talk and you hit me up on Instagram. I just love the whole King Caboodle, the whole ball of wax, homie. I'm all about it. I'm on board. Let's do it. I'm down to make some freaking videos, homie. And yeah, videos and lives and shorts. You got to get it done. Because I'm hoping to somehow, even like, do you have a cousin named Kristen? Dude, I have 10 aunts and uncles. 10 aunts and uncles. Multiple cousins. Most of the cousins are like me. Yeah, just if they are doing good, it's just because they're just recently started doing good. I don't have cousins that have great credit. Well, maybe one or two, but like one's a correction, correction officer, catch me, he ain't gonna help me. I got another one, he's married with some kids, they're not gonna help me out. But I have a cousin named Kristen, and she's she's a brainiac, bro. She's brilliant. I think she was like went to college at 16, graduated high school at 15, has a great job, lives in SAC. I want to hit her up and say, Will you co sign for me to get a car? My awesome cousin. I need someone to co-sign. I need someone to go down and co-sign for the car, dog. I don't want to keep paying $1,400 for a car, dude. A rental. And CarMax already just threw me away. I guess I can, I don't know, do about that, bro. They accused me of being a straight-up fraudster. That ain't going to work. And then if you go to any of the other car lots in town, they want $1,000, $2,000 down payment deposit. That I'm not going to have. So, dude, I'm just, man, I'm really, I got to, I got to get car. I got to start doing some content, bro. I got to start working it out. We got to do this. Oh, my eye gets better. Oh, my finger gets better. Hope I can find a place to live in Reno. And that's what's up. I'm going to go live tonight. Let's look at some comments. Let's look at some comments. If you put more down payment, they'll give you a car. Expect to see him soon. I'm not even tripping. Dude, my house is super protected. You know what I love about my house? It's tucked in the cut. And right across from me is Sue's brother and my cousin, Lou Ed. He lives right across the street. He, he has these. He has those. And he's, he's crazy. He's on permanent SSI. And all he does is look out his window. And if anyone come around here bucking up, he's going to see it. And he's going to come out. Not only that. But the guy who lives next to me over here is a correctional officer. He works at CMC East, but he works weird hours. He's home a lot and he has roommates. And then my homie Nick across the street and his dad. Bro, if someone came here, there's there no way they would succeed. If they came here and started some shit, isn't it, bro? It wouldn't happen. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping one bit, bro. I don't have a guilty conscience. I'm not worried about this, dude. I'm the, the only reason he got over like this, the only reason he did so good in the fight is because he pulled the, my shirt over my head. And I didn't expect that, dude. I didn't try to defend against it. And he did it at a weird time, too, where we traded some blows. And then I stopped and I expected us to stop and shake and be like, whoa, what are we doing? And so I stopped and was like, and he took advantage, dude, of me stopping. And he, whoop, dirt bag on me. That's the only reason this exists. So he's not a good fighter. He's not tough. Had you not pulled my shirt over my head, bro, I wouldn't have this. It would have been a whole different thing. That's what he had to do to win the fight, get dirty. Had to get dirty, man. But we shouldn't even, there shouldn't even have been a fight, bro, because it was at work. I wasn't trying to fight at work, man. I love the company. I got respect for the company. I love my boss, and I'm grateful he did what he did for me, gave me a position, and I'm learn, I'm using my schooling, and I'm working, and I'm learning, and I'm happy, bro. And um, I would never disrespect them by doing that. So, yeah, I'm not tripping nothing, dog. I got no guilty conscience. Plus, the Bible says, 
No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So anyways, I'm Audi, man. I'm Audi. Splint, I've been with you since Methodie Talks. Tell me a lot in my life. Good, I'm glad to hear it, Johnny. I know who you are, Johnny M. You're right. You've been here for a grip, man. Spencer on the Tita. What's up, El Pacas? Power of you, homie. Thank you, man. There's no rules in street fighting. You know that, Splint. I mean, there's no rules, homeboy, but, dude, I'm not going to cheat. There is, though. There is rules. When you give a head of fade, is a head of fade. I'm not going to walk up and cheap shot you. Like, hey, dog, let's shake on it. And you go to shake and I punch you. That, you know, I'm not going to bite you. I bite your nose off. I'm not going to kick you while you're down. I'm not going to have my brother come over. Hey, come over, my brother, my brother Dustin. And then someone comes to fight me. I tell my brother, jump in, dog, whenever you're just right. Dude, there are rules, homie. Give someone a head up fade. Give him a head up fade. You got a problem? You, you want to handle it with the knuckles? But, dude, you're going to pull my shirt over my head. And that's fine. Pull my shirt over my head and then crack me. And then that's it. But you just boom. Boom, 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 boom. As hard as he can in the side of my head. With my shirt pulled over, bro. No, that's chicken shit, dog. That's chicken shit. That's cowardly. I don't respect it. I don't respect it one bit. And like I said, if one of my homeboys, if I went to my neighborhood and one of my little homies said he was going to get down and I was there and he started fighting and he did that, I would break it up and say, what are you doing, bro? Don't do that. The hell are you doing? Get this full of fade, homie. Swing up from the shoulders. And my, our our job might as well walk up with a handful of dirt and we're going to fight and I just throw the dirt in your eyes. Should I do that? Just walk around for now on with a handful of dirt in my hands? What do you got in your hand? Oh, a handful of dirt. And if someone causes problems, I just go throw sand in their eyes and then like this and try and get it out and I'm boom, 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 boom. That that would be that'd be cool with you. To me, that chicken shit. Just like, tell me if I mean... Dog, I'm fighting one of my best friends. All of a sudden, I get cracked hard. It knocks me down. I get up and I shake my friend's hand because I know he's not that good of a fighter. I didn't think he'd get hit that hard. I didn't think this fool could put me on my ass. So I jumped up and shook his hand. I said, dude, I respect that punch, bro. We kept fighting. Later on, these girls who were watching said, why did you shake that guy's hand? I said, because I respected the punch. They go, he didn't punch you. His friend standing next to him did. What? Dude, that's happened to me a couple different times. It's scandalous, dog. Ain't nothing right about that. Just like my homeboy Todd. I was, I'm at Todd's house. He comes over with one of his homeboys. I introduce myself to this to Todd's homeboy as Todd's dad. He comes in. I'm like, what's up, bro? I'm Todd's dad. Thing that was funny. Todd's all splinter man. What's up? Don't we just and get in my face. And I pushed him. And his friend cracked me. And I fell down. But I got up. And I thought Todd punched me, not this guy. So I started to swing on him, but the guy who punched me broke us up. No, you guys don't need to fight your friends. What are you doing? So he cracks me, knocks me down. And when I jump up trying to get something, he breaks it up. No, you need to be cool. Then I leave. Next day, I wake up, my eye looking like this. Come to find out Todd didn't punch me. The dude standing next to him did. I don't respect it, bro. I don't respect none of that cheap shot, willy-nilly POS. I'm POV, homeboy, not POS. That's a dirt bag. I can see if you're if I'm walking down an alley and a guy jumps out with a ski mask on a knife trying to mug me, then I guess pull a shirt over and just do him all dirty and throw dirt in his eyes and kick him while he's down and then try to jump him and bite him. But someone who's your coworker, who is your roommate, who you eat dinner with and you spend time with and you know on a personal level to do that? Hell no, bro. I, Charlie Holmes. So I think there is rules in street fighting. You know what I mean? Bro looks skinnier since last time I seen you. Who said that? Who said that? Homie looks skinnier. Let's see. Let's see if that's true. Ow! Let's see if that's true, bro. I don't know. Skinnier? I don't really feel skinny, dog. I think I look skinny. I think I still got some guns. I still got some hood. I think the light's kind of messing it up. Oh, there's a light we need. Whoa. I don't know. Skinnier. I haven't lost a pound. Still got the back arm. Still got... Look at this wing that pops out over here. 
Jiminy Christmas, look at that thing. You can really grab it like this. That's a hell of a wing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling any skin here, Don. Ugh. I think that's just you trying to smut me up. Look at him. Looks like he might have lost a little bit of weight. You really think so? I'm not seeing it. Ugh. I'm not seeing any weight loss. I think that's just you trying to put doubt on people's heads. Because we know what weight loss comes from. Drug use. So what you're trying to say in a subtle way is that thing Splinter might be using. You know what I hate is when they say again. Oh, Splinter's using again as if there ever was a beginning. Yeah, years and years ago. But bro, you got to understand, I've been a sober, sober off all the hardcore shit since 2017, man. Years. Years. It's so far back in my history, I don't even trip on it. I don't know where to get it. I have no desire for it. I don't want to use it. And so for you to say that I'm losing weight, I just think you're hating. Wow! Fuck. There's something right here that hurts like a son of a bitch, man. Oh, I want to do this, like, but I can't because this finger. So I was going to hit my chest, but there's something over here. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the guy who said I look skinny, you don't have back arms like this. I'm pretty sure that that dude don't have no back arms like this, though. You know what I mean? You ain't got them. Spend some Mensa. No back arms for you. No, I don't think I'm skinnier at all. Thanks for asking, though. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. They're gunning you. They're gunning you. I've always told if it's at work, it's not snitching, it's reporting. Yeah, it's not snitching. I had to cover my ass, dog. I'm going to find out anyway. I'm not going to lie for him. Thank you. I appreciate it. My dog, what's up, Tim? That's my doggy dog. Let me look at this hair. It's wild. So anyways, let's go live tonight. This is a long live. And um, what I'm going to do is go live tonight. I can't believe we're not going after the bag spinner. You are entitled to a workers' comp. And these videos will be used against you. Not careful. You're looking out for your spinner. Um, how have they used against me? I just told the exact truth. I mean, used against me how? I just said exactly, I mean, I already said what's already out there. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. You're right. You might win the fight. I won the battle, oh boy. I'm still there. I'm still there. And, um, yeah, bro, this, I mean, this could, I don't, I don't want to say too much, right? But, um, yeah, this could be workers' comp. I mean, I got hurt at work. Look at my finger. You know? And, and, and the company, I said, I don't want to say too much, but um, the company knew about this guy, knew he was there drunk. It's a liability. I'm sure if I wanted to do something scantless, I could, but I'm, I'm loyal, bro. I'm loyal to the company. I don't want to get them caught up. I'm not going to file nothing. I'm not going to do workman's comp. I'm not going to try to hold them accountable or get hustle money from them. I just want my position back. I just want to work. It's an unfortunate thing that happened. And um, Yeah. A guy from prison, she you know, zero rules, all things go. I disagree. Cheap shotting doesn't go. Okay, oh, okay, really, really? Let's tell a story. I'm in prison. I'm in C1, A side, and I have the keys. I love saying that. Yep, this is one of those stories. I'm in Wasco reception, C1, A side, where the keys to the wood pile. If you don't believe me, ask my brother Ricochet. My brother Ricochet was there. He wouldn't lie for me. Ricochet was there. And Giant was there. Bam was there. There's a bunch of the homeboys there. I had the keys. Now, we had a homeboy named Spoon Dog. The reason we, why we call him Spoon Dog, because he would always come up and say, hey, can I use your Spoon Dog? Can I use your Spoon Dog? Because he'd want to use your spoon to get a cup of coffee or maybe take a bite of his. People carry spoons on him. 
their way of eating a soup, they can just be like, take a bite, or they get a shot of coffee to stir it up. Hey, can I have your spoon dog? Can I have your spoon dog? Well, there's this dude from LA. I can't remember his name right now, off the top of my head, but he was real buff. He was buff, Josh, because he was a gymnast. This dude was badass a gymnast. He could do all kinds of tumbles and rolls and backflips and back cartwheels and and do all kinds of spinning things. And he was just he was a, a gymnast, bro, legit, and he was buff. But he decided he did not like Spoon Dog. And me and Chance and my brother Ricochet and Spoon Dog and Mark Bell and some other people were sitting there talking, hanging out. And that Josh dude walked up and just boom, cracked Spoon Dog. Just walked out and punched him in the face, bro. Cheap shot at him. You can't do that. There are rules in prison. He got in trouble for that. I got him in trouble for that. I made him get 23 seconds. I told the LA car, take Josh in the bathroom and whoop his ass. 23 seconds, no face shots. 23 seconds of the body, he's out of line. You don't walk up to another wood and just punch him, cheap shot him. If you want to fight another wood in prison, you got to go through the proper channels. You got to say, hey, I want to get down with this dude. Of course, people try to squash it. Like, why? Why do you want to get down? Can we squash it? You're not bringing some beef from the streets in, are you? We don't fight. No street fights in here. You can't bring, you know, did he disrespect you on the streets? Did he hump your old lady? Did he steal your VCR? Leave that on the streets. If it's in here, what did he do? Can we work it out? If it can't be worked out, no, I want to head up Faye with that wood. Then we work it out. We put you in the bathroom. We get some people to keep a lookout. And it's done right. So I disagree with you. There are rules in prison, bro. You're not going to kick someone when they're down. Are you? Stop your head out. They're down and knocked out. Are you going to cheap shot them? Are you going to be like, maybe, uh, I mean, maybe another race and a riot. I mean, but, but you one of your own, your homeboys, your roommate, your friend, coworker. Come on, man. So anyways, we're going to go live tonight. And much love from the point of view crew. Just keep getting your money home exactly. My eye does not hurt, but my hand does. Thank you for liking the shirt. Exactly. Hey, I love you guys. We got a two hour live, and uh, let's go live again tonight. I'll be in Bakersfield for a minute. I'm supposed to go to Reno um, Monday, but like I said, I have no place to live there. I'm not sure I'm going to work that out. And um, blah, 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 blah. yeah. So that's what's up.